Welcome to MassDEP's third party inspection reporting presentation covering NSPECT and the UST data management system. Our intention of this presentation is to familiarize you with the features of the NSPECT application and associated procedures. During this presentation, we'll be covering a variety of topics, including account creation, accessing and navigating the application, form functionality, and general workflow, as well as how to contact us for additional assistance. Let's start with how to create an account. To complete a third-party inspection report, you will need to have accounts in both NSPECT and the UST data management system. The UST DMS is the registration platform, while the inspection information will be entered into NSPECT. To request an account in NSPECT, reach out to us at dep.ust at mass.gov. To create an account in the UST data management system, you can self-register at the website listed here. If you are already an active third-party inspector, your existing accounts are used to log in. The NSPECT program is available as a mobile app that can be used on phones, tablets, and other similar devices. Search for NSPECT in the App Store or Google Play Store. Note, you'll want to install NSPECT not NSPECT Classic. The app has enhanced ease of use and is the future for the program. The web version has a limited lifespan and may no longer be available for use in the future, so that's something you'll want to keep in mind. Once the application has been installed, the Connection Settings screen should appear. If you do not immediately see this screen, you can click the Server Settings button to navigate to it. You will then want to connect to the NSPEC server by entering the address listed here and selecting Save. Next, let's go over how to navigate through the application and where to find various information. Once you have been connected to the server network, you'll see the login screen. Enter your username and password here and select Sign In to begin. After logging in, you'll land on your inspection screen. This queue is empty, however, it may be populated with inspections already assigned to you. You can see when the last time your information was synchronized to the cloud at the bottom right corner of the screen. You can also click here to see synchronize options. Let's see what that would look like. From the synchronize pop-up menu, you can choose Synchronize Now to manually sync to the cloud as often as needed, or you can turn on Auto Sync to have the application periodically synchronize to keep your inspection activity current across platforms. Closing out of this menu will bring you back to the inspection screen. If you have a list of pending inspections, you can select one from here to bring you directly to its form. You can click the plus symbol at the top right corner of the screen to add a new inspection as well. Let's take a look at adding a new inspection. Clicking the plus symbol from the inspection screen will bring you to the add new inspection screen. From here, the first thing you need to do is search for the facility of interest. Select the site from the results list and then enter the inspection details. You'll want to confirm that the information here is correct and then add an inspection type and appropriate dates. As you can see here, red asterisks are used to indicate required fields. This same feature is used throughout the app to indicate required questions and other fields. Once the information has been entered, select Save to continue. You'll then be brought to the Forms menu for the inspection that you have created. You can also see further details about the inspection by selecting the Details menu at the top right of the screen. The Details menu shows you the site and other information associated with the inspection you're working on. To start answering third-party inspection questions, click on the inspection on the Forms menu, as indicated by the red cursor arrow here. 
Let's now take a look at the TPIR form itself. The first thing I want to highlight is that if you select the blue stripe at the bottom of your screen, you'll be brought to the form contents page. From there, you'll see an overview of the entire form, including red asterisks where required fields still need to be completed. To navigate from the form contents page, you can either select a lettered section name or you can move sequentially through the form using the arrows at the bottom of each screen. Progress through the form by answering each question, yes, no, or NA, to record your observations from your initial inspection of the facility. Please note, not all violations are from no answers. They can be prompted by a yes or a no, depending on the question. Question one here was answered in a way that results in a violation. So a yellow symbol appeared in the top right corner of the question, circled here in red. If an observed violation has been addressed prior to the TPIR due date, the resolved option should be selected. If it's addressed after the TPIR has been submitted, note the resolution in your RTC completion report. We'll talk more about this report later. Comments can be added to all questions to include additional information as well. You can add comments, capture GPS coordinates, and include images for each question. To add these, select the plus icon on the right side of the question you want to add information to. All attachments are included in the final report for review by the owner or operator of the facility. Some questions have drop down menus that pop up when you click into their answer field. Select one of the available answers to continue. Other questions may ask for a date and have calendars that pop up when you click into their answer field. From there, navigate and select the appropriate date to answer the question. If you manually enter the date, make sure it is in month, month, day, day, year, 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 year format. Some of the sections within the form are formatted differently than the others, as shown here. Within these sections, select Add New Item and then click into the Unnamed Item field for the section questions to appear. This allows you to add more than one item. For example, if you had more than one financial responsibility instrument, you can add all of them individually and answer the question set for each. Once you've answered all of the questions, you'll be brought back to the main section screen like this one. From here, you can add another new item or edit the existing item's answers by clicking the Now Named field. If no more information needs to be added here, continue on to the next section of the form by selecting the Next Section arrow or through the navigation panel at the bottom of your screen. Within the TPIR form, there are questions that may prompt for further questions to be answered within the same section. Whether or not you see additional questions depends on how you answer the first one. We call the new questions conditional, since you only need to answer them if certain conditions are met. In the case shown here, I've answered yes to question one, which prompts conditional questions two, three, etc. to appear. This feature helps you save time by reducing the number of questions you'll have to answer NA or not applicable. Another similar feature that helps you save time are conditional sections. These are entire sections of questions that you only need to answer if you indicate they are relevant. For example, I've indicated here that yes, I have a continuous interstitial space monitoring system and no, I do not have an in-tank monitoring system. Therefore, the conditional section of questions relevant to continuous interstitial space monitoring systems will appear, and the conditional section of questions relevant to in-tank monitoring systems will not appear. In general, if you are not seeing questions that you should be, it may be worth going back through the questions you've already answered to ensure the appropriate questions and sections have been added. 
After all the questions have been answered, you'll reach the certification section of the form. In this section, you'll be asked to type in your name, select a date of inspection, and to add your signature. To sign the inspection, select the New Signature button, sign on your screen, and select Save. Once everything has been entered, select Done at the bottom right corner of the screen. At this point, you'll be brought back to the Inspections Forms menu. Note, if any violations were indicated while completing the inspection form, there will now be a new menu named Violations between the Forms and Details menus. You can view all of the violations indicated on this inspection by selecting this menu. You can review the violations and select one if you want to be brought back to the section of the form with its associated question. To complete the inspection in Inspect, select Mark Complete on the Forms menu. Then confirm your choice by selecting Yes, Mark Complete. After the inspection has been marked as complete in Inspect and the information has been synchronized with the cloud, the owner or operator of the facility will be able to start their review process and sign off on the inspection in the UST data management system. Within the UST data management system, the status of the third-party inspection report on the facility details page will change from a light blue inspection pending to a green ready for signature after the NSPECT inspection has been completed. The ready for signature status indicates that the third party inspection report or TPIR form is now available to be chosen under the facility's select a form drop down menu. If there were no unresolved violations, the owner or operator will review the inspection, sign off on it, and submit the TPIR form. Then, once the TPIR form has been finalized in the USTDMS, the process will be complete. On the other hand, if there were unresolved violations indicated in the TPIR, the process is not complete yet. If unresolved violations are present in a TPIR, further information will be needed from the owner or operator when they are signing off on their inspection in the USTDMS. There will be a RTC plan, also known as a Return to Compliance Plan section within the TPIR form, where the owner or operator will need to list what actions will be taken to bring each item into compliance. They will review the inspection as well as their RTC plan responses, sign off on everything, and submit the TPIR form. This will finalize the TPIR in the USTDMS, but it will also prompt for a TPIR RTC completion report to be done. The owner or operator will then address the remaining violations identified in their third party inspection report. Once the items are in compliance, a TPIR RTC completion report must be submitted. Within 30 days of the initial TPIR submittal date, the RTC completion report must be finalized. After the initial TPIR has been finalized in the USTDMS, the Return to Compliance inspection form will be available to you in Inspect. Select it as shown here to begin. Within the Return to Compliance inspection form, there are fields to enter reinspection dates and resolution comments. Click the topmost portion of each field to enter the requested information. Once you've finished, select Done at the bottom right of your screen. Once the Return to Compliance inspection has been completed in NSPECT, the TPIR RTC completion report option is available to the owner or operator on the facility details page of the UST DMS. Once this form has been reviewed, submitted, and finalized, the process will be complete.
Thank you for watching. We hope this presentation has been helpful in familiarizing you with the NSPECT application and the TPIR submittal process. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us for further assistance via email or phone. You can contact us at dep.ust at mass.gov, or you can call us at 617-556-1036.